What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with kind of a rendering principles video. So I wanted to talk about something very important that can make the difference between your renderings being really realistic and not being realistic. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this is the studio file that I've created in the past. I will link to the video where I actually create the studio. And uh, really I made this studio in V-Ray just to kind of give me a lighting environment that would give me good lighting so I could kind of preview the way that different things were going to look. So if I come in here and I render this right now, um, and I just use like an interactive render, you can see how I basically have this set up with just some lighting in the background and just kind of a just kind of a wall that I've created. I did round the edges off with round corner, but really what we want to do is we want to look at what these materials do. And so this is in V-Ray, but um, this is something that's going to be important for most rendering programs in one way or the other. And so the one thing about creating a photorealistic rendering, and I guess there's a few things, but one of the most important things is the way the materials look. Because if you think about what you're doing, you're taking a plane, like a flat plane, and you're applying a material to it, and you're trying to make it look 3D. And so, like, let's say, for example, I have a material I've downloaded from Polygon. Um, I, I use Polygon in a lot of tutorials because they come with various maps that we can use, and I'll talk more about those in a second. But really what this is going to do is this is going to allow me to apply this material to this wall. And so if I kind of zoom into the wall over here, so that my interactive render shows this. You can see how as you turn this sideways, while this is a very um, high quality texture, as you kind of zoom in, you can really tell that this is just kind of a image pasted on a flat face. So you can see that this is flat and uh, there's some UV mapping errors in here. I'm not really going to talk about that too much right now. I'll just fix that real quick using the UV mapping tools in version 3.6. There we go, that's better. We probably need to move it around a little bit, but what, what I want you to focus on is if you look at this wall, it looks very flat. And so when it looks very flat, what that means is it doesn't look very realistic. And so what we're gonna do in this case is we're gonna take a look at a few different kinds of maps and um, things that you can apply to your materials inside of V-Ray or other rendering programs to make things more realistic. And so there's a few different kinds of maps, and uh, these sometimes come with your materials and sometimes you have to create them. I'm not going to talk about how to create them in this video, but like for example, this is polygon.com's website and whenever you pick a material you can see how it comes with different maps so it comes with diffuse maps which are your image that's being applied to your face as well as this one has normal maps gloss maps displacement maps reflection maps and so i want to talk about them a little bit but more i just want to get into like the general theory of the way that all of this works so you know right now this looks very flat well if you go into v-ray and you click on this right arrow right here, you can see how there's a lot of different places where you can adjust all of the different settings inside of V-Ray. And if you'll notice, like for example, this brick material that we have here, if I click on this, you can see how you can see how the option for diffuse, that's where your image file is loaded. So that's where V-Ray is loading the image file that it's applying to this face. And so whenever V-Ray does a rendering, it goes and looks in that location to render based on that material. But as we go down, what you're going to notice is these other things like reflection and... Um, if you go down into your map section, like your bump and normal mapping, those have different things that you can load in here in order to make things look more realistic. And so what I want to do in this case is I want to start off and I want to talk about a couple of the maps that go down below. And so one of the ways you can tell if these maps are working or not is you can go up and you can turn off the image in your diffuse map. So that's basically the image that's being tiled along this face. So for what we're going to do here, we're going to load in a a normal map that basically simulates the bumpiness or the roughness of the material and the way that the light would react there. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. I'm going to turn off the tiling image so that when we uh, load this map in you can see what it does. But if you go down into your map section and you turn on normal or bump mapping, this gives you the option to load in a map. Um, that will then allow V-Ray to simulate what your light's going to look like. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click this drop down and I'm going to click that I'm going to load in a normal map instead of a bump map. So a normal map is a map 
that you can bring in that's going to allow this to kind of simulate the way that light's going to respond to the roughness of this material. And you can see how this is in here is kind of different colors. Um, if you do like a bump map, this, this is going to be more black and white information as opposed to colored like this. Either one of those will work, but we're going to go ahead and load this information in and take a look at what V-Ray does with it. So in order to do that, we're just going to go into normal map. We're going to click this button right here and we're going to load in a bitmap. So when you do this, it may initially look like this. Just go up and find bitmap and then click on this button right here in order to load your normal map in. So you're just going to find this normal map file and you're going to load this in. And so what the normal map is doing in this case is this is simulating the light bouncing off of these, but this still stays a flat wall. And so because this stays a flat wall, when you kind of rotate to the right like this, you can see how it still kind of looks flat. So it still doesn't look ultra realistic because in real life, this would have like ins and outs where the mortar is and things like that. And so in order to fix that, what we're going to do is we're going to load what's called a displacement map. So what a displacement map does is this is going to make V-Ray actually move your geometry around so that this won't be flat anymore. And so in order to do that, you're going to look inside your map section down under the option for displacement, and you're going to turn that on. When you turn that on, you're going to be able to load this in in the same way. And one thing to note about this is for this to work inside of V-Ray, you really need to apply your material to the outside of a group. So if you were to come in here and apply this material directly to this face inside of SketchUp, it wouldn't really work. Um, so for some reason, applying it to the outside of the groups is really the only way that this displacement loads in properly. So just know if it just isn't working, um, see if you've applied your material to faces instead of to groups. But what we're gonna do in this case is we're just gonna click on this button right here. We're gonna go find a bitmap. And in this case, this comes with a displacement map. So you can see how this is the DSP underscore 3K. If I open this up, and take a look at it, you can see how this is going to contain information about where V-Ray should move geometry out and in. So, um, so the darker materials and the lighter materials are going to affect how far these are displaced. And so we're going to go ahead and double click on this and we're going to load this in. And one thing I will note about this is for whatever reason, when you're using an interactive render, this doesn't really seem to work unless you stop and start your render again. So I'm going to stop and start my render and then we're going to take a look at our brick wall and you can see how now that this displacement map is loaded in this is taking longer than it was before in order to load this so you can see how this isn't moving as quickly displacement maps really kind of affect the performance of your computer um, they just take longer to load in so once this gets loaded in initially it seems to run a little bit faster but just know when you're using these maps um, they just take longer to load because they're having to do more stuff this is actually simulating moving the geometry around instead of just faking bumps using a normal map. And so now, if I was to rotate to the right, you see how this is taking longer to do? But now if I rotate this to the right and I kind of zoom in and I look down the face of my wall, you're going to see that this has actually now been moved out and in to make this wall look rough like it's actually brick. And you can adjust how strong this displacement is using the amounts. So like for example, if I wanted this to be a little bit stronger, I could type in a 1.5. And this would rebuild this with uh, more displacement or more movement in your material. So you can make the effect more pronounced by adjusting the amount in your displacement map section. So you can see how if you look at this now, that effect is even more pronounced than it was before because we ran that up to 1.5. So even now, if we move off to the side here and we look down the wall, you can see how even though our brick material here is just a flat image applied to this face, you can see how V-Ray is actually simulating this along here. And there's obviously some UV mapping errors here that I didn't really mess with all that much, but this really allows you to create more realistic things in here.
So there's a lot of other maps that you can use as well when you're working with uh, rendering. So things like reflection maps and other things like that, which I think I'll cover in a future video because I think this one's getting a little bit long. But just know that the key to having realistic renders and realistic materials is going to be using these maps in order to make your surfaces look really 3D. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Did you know about using maps in your renderings? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.